In today's tutorial, uh, we're going to go over a workflow for extracting vector information from Rhino geometries that can then be used in the um, laser cutting process for engraving and cutting. Okay, and we're going to show how you can extract and format this information uh, for for laser engraving and cutting. Uh, the Make2D command in Rhino is often used for producing 2D orthographic illustrations of your Rhino models, but the command can also be used to create uh, linear information that can be used in the uh, laser engraving process. And we're going to go over a simple workflow today for accomplishing that task. We're going to start out with a um, OBJ file uh, that was modeled, in this case, um, by one of my students, uh, Ronald Wu of a Centaur. And our goal is to be able to uh, take the information for this file and format it uh, for laser cutting. And the first step that we're going to do in this case is that we're going to take this OBJ file and convert it uh, from polygonal data to a polymesh NURBS data. And the way that we're going to accomplish that is that we're going to select our object here and we're going to run a, from the command line, I'm going to type mesh and bring up the mesh to NURBS command. Okay. And let's select uh, invert. Um, select objects. Invert. Uh, invert. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to call that layer polymesh. And we're going to come down here, make that active, and we're going to change the object layer, and we're going to turn off uh, our other layers, and we'll have an object that looks like that. Now, um, the reason why we want to convert it into a poly mesh is because our make 2D command only um, understands and sees uh, NURBS objects. So once we've done that, we can use our perspective window and we can pose our image the way that we uh, want to uh, capture it using the camera and we can pose it um, and we're going to have an open pose like that and I want to uh, capture this little area here where it overlaps the leg there um, and this is our pose okay and once we've done that, we can select our geometries and we can type in the command make 2D. It comes up in the command line. Make 2D. And in this case, we're going to just use current view. Okay, we're going to set this to current view. We, we don't want to show any of our tangent or hidden edges because we want to get a hidden line rendering of our model. And we're going to click OK. okay. We're going to click OK. Now, once we've done that, we go to our top window, and we're going we're gonna to select this, and we're going to create a new layer, move that down, and we're going to call this Centaur underscore lines, okay? And we're going to change the object layer, and we're also going to paint that layer red, okay? And... We're going to make sure that we do a change object layer and make that uh, our current layer. And so now we should be able to turn off our Make 2D and our Poly Mesh, and we have these red lines which represents our Centaur data. Okay. Now the next thing that we want to do is that we want to take this now, and this is ready. We chose red because that's our engraving color. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is that we would like to create a new layer. And we're going to paint this layer cyan. 
And because that's our reference layer, we're going to set up our laser bed now, okay? And we know that um, onto that we want to add a rectangle that starts at zero. Let's make this layer the current layer. It starts at zero, and it's 48, comma, 24, which is dimensions of our laser bed. So right now our object is approximately... Um, it's our object is approximately um, almost 15 inches high. And I want to move this down a little bit. And I can scale this. And let's make it about 10 inches. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Run my scale again. And I'm going to bring that down to about 10 inches, like so. Okay? And uh, there we have our vectors that are ready for engraving with the laser cutter. It's a good idea to group these together using Control G to group them. So if you have to move it, you can just move it as a um, unit. And that is the basic workflow for uh, converting um, three-dimensional data in Rhino and formatting it for laser cutting. And in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other uh, considerations and steps that you want to do in order to prepare it properly for the laser cutting process. So now that we've uh, extracted our data, one of the things that we can do um, is that we can um, do a couple things to um, set up our file, and these are a couple options that if you want to take it uh, a little bit further, okay? Let's start by uh, grabbing our object, and we're going to create a bounding box around it. Okay, and that puts a bounding box, which gives us a general dimensions for our object. Okay, we're going to create a, we're going to move this down to this layer, and we're going to paint that layer magenta, which is uh, generally our cut layer. And one of the things that I want to do, I want to take uh, this layer, which represents our cut line, and I'm going to get the midpoint of that object, and I'm going to scale it, or I'm sorry, the center. And I'm going to give myself a little room around my object. And this represents sort of like the border around my object. And I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to move it here. Sorry. I'm going to unlock this. And these are some of the common things that can happen. And I'm glad that I have an opportunity to show you uh, how to get around some of these things. And let's move this back to the reference layer. Okay. And so if I look at this, my object is on this layer. Now, one of the things that's really useful, and I'm going to show you this little uh, step here uh, because it can prove very useful, is that um, we could do an engraving uh, where uh, we engrave this in two different types of material, and this became sort of like an inlay if you wanted to do an inlay. But in order to do that, you'd sort of need to have a cut line that would capture the silhouette of this object. And I'm going to show you um, how to go about doing that. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, and it's a nice thing to be able to do. Let me lock down my um, cut layer right here, and I'm going to go over here to this to this layer. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select those curves, and I'm going to do a curve boolean. Curve boolean, and using the curve boolean. If I want to select the inside region to keep while I'm in curve boolean, if I select out here, you note that it selects the silhouette of that object, okay, which is exactly what I want. And so I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to put that down on that layer, on the cut layer, so that now, if I were to turn this off, I've got this cut out. And actually, what I'd like to do is to create a new layer, and I'm going to paint this layer blue. 
and I'm going to call that intercut. And I'm going to select that element that I just created, and I'm going to change its object layer. So that now I have that, my inner cut, my outer cut, and I have um, my engraved lines, and I can use this to uh, generate um, an engraving, which I can also use for an inlay, and I can add other elements to it to, um, to, to improve it. I may even want to take, do something like uh, move the uh, move and adjust where exactly uh, it fits within the picture plane. Uh, I might want to um, make this slightly wider in this direction to improve the composition. But what it allows me to do is to create a really nice engraving that is now ready and formatted for laser cutting. And it's a really nice uh, workflow that you can employ in Rhino to take uh, three-dimensional geometries and set them up for uh, both engraving and laser cutting. Enjoy.